A clear recollection of every line I've ever said on any television show. Give me a few of them. Let's see. The pilot episode was when I was trying to tell Shirley that we should be in a, uh, in a band. And I said, uh, Mom, I'm worried about you. You're too old to be working. And she said, thanks, honey. You've just made my day. <laughs> Laugh track. Brilliant writing. Thank you. Brilliant acting, I think. What was it like being a part of that show? It was good. It was, it was a great time for me. A lot of fun. I mean, hard work and stuff, but I mean, there were, there were advantages. You know, I, um, I was a short, fat 15-year-old and had absolutely no problem getting a prom date. Was it tough dealing with all that fame at such an early age? I mean, you were... After a brief moment, it seemed really normal. It seemed really normal. It seemed like that's supposed to be what goes on. It got weird long afterwards. When it started to dissipate, it was like, well, wait. Bring that back. I want that back. Why aren't the 16-year-olds lined up in front of my house? Yeah, well, they still are, but I'm 31, so I try <laughs> to avoid them. No, I mean, was it hard to accept the fact that the series was canceled? I know you walked to work one day, or you got to work, and what happened? A security guard said... The security guard said, you can go home. The Partridge family doesn't live here anymore. The first time I didn't meet my rent, it was, it was really weird, because I had a court-appointed guardian. Uh, and I'd tell him, listen, I need uh, $100 because my mini bike broke. And he'd say, well, you don't have it. And I'd say, I know, I know, I'll never ask again, just I really need this. And he'd say, okay. Then when I got a little older, I need $300 because my car needs a new transmission. Well, you don't have it. Well, I know, and I'll never ask again, and I'm sorry. And he'd say, okay. And one day, I need $600 to pay my rent. And he'd say, you don't have it. And I'd say, I know, I know, but I'll never ask again. And he'd say, no, 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 you don't have it. That was a surprise. Also a surprise was the lack of interest from casting directors as he tried to look for acting work. This isn't just a contest to see how good you look in a wet t-shirt, oh, no, 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 but how well they move, how well you move in one. He appeared in several B-grade teen flicks, but there was no convincing people he could play anyone but Danny Partridge. There's a time when, when things are at the bottom is when you find yourself, you know, clawing over the bodies of my three sons to get on the love boat that you realize that things are not going as planned. By the time he hit his 20s, Danny was using drugs. In 1985, he was arrested in Florida for attempting to buy cocaine. And a few years ago, he found he'd become addicted to crack. Why'd you turn to drugs? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a psychologist. There are a lot of people who say you, uh, child celebrities turn to drugs because they're, um, not child celebrities anymore because the money ran out because they have too much money. I have the vaguest idea. Um, often people like to say, well, it's that being that child celebrity made him turn to drugs. Well, you know, when I was a kid getting high, I was not getting high with the Brady Bunch. I was getting high with my buddies in school. They were never child stars. It's, you know, we have a, we have a serious national problem, but I don't think it's television. But don't you think a disproportionate number of your contemporaries TV contemporaries you know, have run into real problems when you look at it. I must concede that point. Uh, I, I usually, and for the last several years, have stuck with it's a complete cop-out. And now the numbers of ex-child stars running into trouble, including myself, are, are so overbearing. There's just so many that there, maybe I was mistaken. Maybe there is some correlation. I just don't find it on a personal level. Two years ago, Danny underwent a drug treatment program and was able to get off cocaine. Power 92, valley weather warmer today. He became a successful DJ, first in his native Philadelphia and then in Phoenix. And over the years, he's learned to have a sense of humor about the trouble he and other child stars have encountered. I was talking to uh, Todd Bridges and uh, Warren Chapman and, and Butch Patrick, who played Eddie Munster. And we're all talking about the troubles we have had, and uh, we're all talking about what we're going to do now. And everybody had a production company and something in development. And I said, well, I'm going to work on a TV special for the four of us called Battle of the Network Felons. And Bridges looked at me and goes, I'm not a felon. I, I mean, he just went off. I went, OK, man, relax. It's all right. Your sense of humor really has helped you, huh? It just comes natural. I mean, it, it's, you know, I get upset like everybody else. Uh, lately, I, I've spent the better time, the better portion of my day upset for the last couple of days, for the last couple of weeks, anyway. On Easter Sunday morning, he was arrested in Phoenix on charges of assaulting a transvestite and then fleeing from police. He says there's a good explanation for what happened, but his attorney will not let him talk about the incident. If he's found guilty, he could get nine years in prison, but that still hasn't kept Danny from laughing in the face of big-time trouble.
I uh, was watching Saturday Night Live the other week, and I was in a hotel room with my wife. We were traveling around, and the guy comes on. He's doing a parody of America's Most Wanted. And he says, and tonight, America's Most Wanted Former Child Actors. I sat up in bed and said, here it comes. <laughs> Michael J. Fox played me as a mad killer. Well, he thinks I'm funny. How am I funny to you? I don't what, know. What, do I amuse you? Am I a clown to you? <laughs> Answer me. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is funny. Ah, is that funny? That's funny. I laughed out loud. I howled. Now, I happened to talk to Todd Bridges this morning. He doesn't find this stuff funny. He doesn't... And I don't find any of our woe is funny, but I, I, find, I can see the humor. What okay. kind of instrument did you ostensibly play? I, I play. play. <laughs> I, I held the bass guitar. You gotta try to sing something is for me. Is this really important to you? Yes, it's really important. Okay. Uh, this morning, I woke up with this feeling I didn't know how to deal with. And then... So I just decided to myself. I'd hide it to myself and never talk about it. But didn't I go and shout it? When you walked into the room, I think I love you. Now you can see why he lip syncs. Yeah, I don't know if uh, the singing is illegal, but yours was criminal. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bryant. <laughs> no matter what, you have to admire Danny's sense of humor. We're back with a report from the Hollywood Dream Factory after we step back in TV time.